For an ICT trader who is learning and they're struggling and they're overwhelmed by all the concepts, what would be your biggest advice? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is one of the easiest things to answer. It is. What is up everybody and welcome back to the Market Moguls podcast. My name is Jesse and today we have a very special episode because I'm gonna be introducing you guys to the person who got me into professional trading and really just, uh, if I wouldn't have met this person or wouldn't have joined this person's group, I would have never really took trading seriously. So, Ty, go ahead and introduce yourself where everybody you, knows you as Bitcoin Playboy. Yeah, yeah, so everyone knows me as Bitcoin Playboy for the last four and a half years. This is actually the first time that I'm coming on a podcast and I'm great and very happy that it's your podcast that we're doing the full docs on. Um, probably time to tell my story for the first time. I know a lot of people in Playbit, you know, don't even know the full extent yet. Yeah, man, that's what I was, uh, I was saying is like, Right before we got on, we were talking about, um, you know, it's kind of crazy how many people have been in the community for like, it's been three years now since yeah, the community started. Three and a half years. Really, as I said, over three years. And uh, a lot of people, including myself until recently, don't really know your story. So yeah, just take it from the top, bro. Yeah. So uh, a lot of it started back in early 2014. You know, I was just a... Uh, kid in uh, college, not doing too much. I had a sales job. I was selling uh, cutlery and kitchen appliances during that period. But what really spiraled my life and started my success was uh, meeting a good friend named Joseph Martin on a video game. Um, crazy enough, Dota 2, late 2014, met this guy, had a good friendship. And evidently, the next coming year, he studied in San Francisco where I was living. So we got to meet for the first time. And through that, his cousin one time came to a club that we were partying at. I got to meet him. Emilio, which is a very proponent figure in my life right now and who's really spiraled my success and crypto and introduced me to the ecosystem. So that entire night, he uh, introduced me to Bitcoin, where if anyone remembers back in 2015, nobody was talking about this. It was, you know, Bitcoin was $200, $300. You know, Congress didn't know about it. It wasn't in any political articles. New York Times had never covered it. So I thought this guy was crazy. I was like, all right, dude, let me, let me go party. I don't want to hear about this. But, um, you know, a year later from exposure due to association with Emilio and Joe, you know, they really got me into crypto. I was like, fine, dude, I'll buy it. It's the price of an Xbox right now. So I bought my first couple of Bitcoin and didn't think too much of it. You know, years go by and we're still friends, but uh, 2017 bull run kicked off the spark of interest for myself and a lot of people, uh, myself especially because I luckily made a bunch of money just passively holding spot coin. And through that sparked my interest in actively trading. So before that, I was still doing my sales job, holding passive Bitcoin and then I made uh, like 6x my yearly salary in a span of like three to four months when Bitcoin hit 17,000. And during that period, I decided to quit my sales job and get a little bit more serious as a lot of people do with trading when they make a little bit of money. Um, ended up losing quite a bit as I was introdu introduced to BitMEX futures. I'm sure a lot of people, uh, OGs, remember BitMEX with uh, Arthur Hayes. Liquidated about half my accounts during that period and decided that I need a little bit more serious and professional help. So from people like Rainer Tao and 212 Simply Investing on YouTube, I started to learn trading. And during that period, I got probably the best opportunity of my life, which was an uh, investment opportunity in Emilio's Bitcoin ATM business, uh, which is Umbank. So I got to become an equity partner back in 2018, which... During that period, Emilio had been running this ATM company for the last six years. And we have a video nine years ago with New York Times showing off the first Bitcoin ATM in New York. And Emilio was the founder in the forefront of that movement. And I'm very happy that I got the opportunity in 2018 to actually get in on the ground floor. And we've been riding that wave since. So not only was trading and passive trading able to like give me that first start and that opportunity to invest in this grassroots crypto ecosystem company, but it actually got me into active trading after that. So here comes 2019. I'm starting to learn about options a little bit more. I'm trading a little bit more seriously with futures and uh, comes around. I have a bunch of homies in college who want to learn about trading now. So I got this little text group chat and I'm teaching everyone options now because it's a little bit more popular than crypto futures. 2020 comes around, the most volatile environment we've seen in the last four years occurs, the COVID epidemic happens, and uh, I get the bright idea to start a free education group, and this is where you come into the picture. So I start Playbit, it is free for you know the first eight months. I'm just trying to show people my prowess in the market because nobody knows who I am. So I have to build some social authority, and why not do it for free and show everyone in public what I'm doing? Right. And I'm sure that's where you came in and saw the Telegram, and Playbit flourished from there. And you know here we are today, Three and a half years later, sitting down for a podcast when, uh, you know, our story comes to another huge chapter. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah, man, that's sick. Like, I think it's so fucking crazy uh, to meet somebody on Dota. Like, I mean, you know, 
I got my start on online too, but it was with the intent to learn trading, yeah. right? Like I had joined Playbit and it's funny that one old picture, um, it was like, like the fur or the old message, not the picture, but the, uh, I, I joined the group and the first message I sent, it was like, what's up guys? Ready to make some sick profits or, or some yeah, complete yeah. <laughs> like NPC shit, you know? And then, um, like little did I know, uh, a couple years from from that point, we would be uh, partners and also sitting here on a podcast. And it's, it's insane, man. Just shows, to, just goes to show, like, um, and I think something that everybody should take away from this is that if you really, you know, have focus and you have desire to do something, um, if you keep keep at it, you know, opportunities will arise. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And sometimes they just arise randomly, like Dota. I mean, that, that's I still can't, and I didn't even know that until. Um, like we were at, uh, we were at the cigar lounge, I think yep. you're somewhere last night yeah. and you told me that and I was just like, dude, that's so fucking Yeah. Crazy. The smallest of opportunities that could have ever possibly happened was a random matchmaking of an online video game where I met people <laughs> that would change the course of my life forever, introduce me into an opportunity to get part ownership of an eight figure company doing multiple millions of dollars a month in revenue, which we had some behind the scenes content to yeah. show you that. And it's, it still blows my mind as one of my proudest stories to date that if I wasn't playing this video game in the summer of 2014, I don't know if I'd be here. I most likely would be a criminal defense attorney in yeah. college. So it goes to show you that, you know, don't take for granted some of the opportunities that are at your hand because your life can change after anything. Even yeah, no. today, you know, life can change today, dude. Yeah, dude, it's, it's insane, man. So like you, you were, uh, your degree was a tax, tax yeah. law? Tax law. That yeah, comes yeah, in yeah. handy too. Like a lot of people that are in business or, you know, any kind of entrepreneurship, uh, you know, tax knowledge is huge. You know, they always say like attorneys and accountants are some of the most important people that you have in your circle. And I bet that that's probably came in in handy quite a few times, like you understanding the tax. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, graduating uh, college, I did go into a law firm initially before I started taking trading and entrepreneurship a little bit more serious. Um, It is a dreadful environment as like everyone's heard, like the, uh, (laughs) the law office, like, uh, you know, a supporter or like the guy who's just chilling there, intern, right? I was an intern for a while and it really wasn't the best environment for about a year and a half. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to be like uh, my life, being the grunt of this office and trying to work my way up this corporate ladder at this firm in uh, Santa Cruz, California. So yeah. evidently moved past that, but it took so much away from it that I use now every year with my taxes. And it's a superpower that I tell a lot of people is if you can understand your taxes, then you can really like break through the next net worth wall. Yeah, no, man, it's huge. It's, you know, so the, fir- the very first step is making it. Everybody always wants to talk about like, making money. And while that is obviously, you know, the most important first step yeah. you got to take. But once you get that, it's kind of like you start to unravel all these these other things you got to learn, like, you know, how to how to keep the money. It's where you see a lot of people fall off. And taxes are always going to be your biggest expense. How to expense, maintain so. it, man. I mean, that's one of the most important things. And, you know, when I was hit with my first, like, massive tax bill in uh, 2019, you know, I had over $400,000 in tax liability. And it, when that hit me, you know, I was like, this is something that I really need to start taking more serious as I started to get into making more money. I was like, now that I'm making more money, not only does my entrepreneurship need to be taken more serious, but my finances and my accounting and every aspect of my life really needs to change in order to keep this lifestyle going forward. So very heavy hit on the tax bill, but after that, Uncle Sam didn't get too much more. Yeah. So I want to circle back a little bit on like uh, the journey. I know that you you started off and you you had, you know, made quite a bit from your initial investment. And like, how much was that figure? Like, and you were, you, you were pretty young at that time. Yeah. And to have like, yeah, what was the figure you made off of the first like big run up? Four hundred and eighty thousand. Four hundred and eighty. So almost, yeah. Grand. I was nearly there for the half million mark, but I'll take four eighty, and it, I mean, literally changed my life completely. Like seeing that figure on the screen, I know nowadays that you know I teach that like the figure is definitely a fake figure until it's in your pocket or in your bank account. Just like your PL on the screen, the green and red numbers are nothing until it's in your bank account. So until I realized that profit, it was really just that euphoria that I was writing. Yeah, and then you you round tripped some of it too. You said because I went you lost round- half of it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Just, I mean, cut to the chase. Yeah, they lost half, half of it. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, man. Yeah, because uh, you always hear these crazy stories about people round tripping like huge amounts, um, and you know, it's. I think that you know, I've done quite a few pods recently, and almost everybody I've talked to, including myself, has round trip at least some sizable chunk of change. Switching right? to the market, man. Exactly. You know, and at the end of the day, like whether you pay in education, whether you pay it in lo- losing money to the market, most of most likely it's going to be both of those. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I know that was both of those for me. 
um, you're always going to pay to your way into the Absolutely. market. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's, it's never going to be just easy, but whether, you, you know, whether it was paying my tuition through losing half my you know, net worth of the time to futures or to a tax bill in 2019, I mean, yeah. losing money doesn't have to be sad all the time because the next year you've learned from it and you're going to improve and it won't happen again. Yeah. And that's, that's the attitude you got to have with losses because, you know, um, I've, I've been up and then been down and been up and been down. And, you know, every time, uh, you kind of go through that almost new life cycle and you learn so much and you're so much better equipped for the next set of opportunities that yeah. come your way. No, absolutely. So, you know, you, you round trip half of it. Was that on equity? Like you held it and it just kind of came back that was down. Futures. No, so, futures. Oh, so futures. at that point, uh, I did have an association of a group of crypto guys around me. And this was Emilio and a lot of his friends who had been in it since 2013. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were ravaging the market of course with futures, you know, before that I even had the idea to get into it, but definitely through 2017, I think BitMEX and Arthur Hayes popularity, uh, got to the forefront of the entire CT population. Mm -hmm. So when that came, I was like, maybe I should try futures. Maybe this is something that I can do. I mean, like I can borrow 10 X the amount of margin that I put in up to like 50 X. So yeah, I started going crazy with it when I first started to, uh, to get into futures and I got the first liquidation email from BitMEX <laughs> and it kind of hit hard. I'm like, you know, this is, we got to take this a little bit more serious, but yeah. So had some uh, fun times back there. Yeah. Those liquidation emails. I was actually making some content recently. I went back to just show people cause you know, a lot of times, I think with social media and uh, just being online in general, all you see is what people really put out there is going to be like, you know, the vacations you're living, the profits, you know, your your picture of your trade, P&L, all this stuff. But uh, a lot of times people don't really realize like that it, it wasn't, you know, everybody looks at it like, oh, this guy's just good at what he does. It's like, yes, but I wasn't always good at what I, what I do. And I went back and like to the old email I used with Binance and there was so many liquidations. Oh, like yeah. I blew so many accounts coming yep. up, man. So it's kind of cool to look back and see that. And, and also, I think everybody should share that because, you know, like, it, you know, it's just you're, you're a walking testament. I'm a walking testament that you can go from like losing it you know, multiple times to where you're one of those people that, uh, you know, if, if their family looked at what they're doing, they're probably like, you, you idiot, you know, go get a job. Or even if you look back at it and then whenever you were in that time, it, things can seem like they're never going to work. But as long as you don't give up and you just stay consistent and, you know, put in the work and put in the reps, like. I, I truly believe that anybody does that, their time will come. Some faster than others, some some will go farther than others for mm -hmm. sure. But I think that, you know, if you really stay committed and put in the reps, like you will see at least some kind of success. 100%. So. Now, um, and a lot of people too in my audience, they're all ICT traders, yep. right? And you trade some ICT, but I some always concepts, tell- Some concepts, yep. <laughs> yeah, some, like the important ones, honestly. Um, like we were having the conversation in the car, it was just like, you know, there's so many, different, you know, too like, many, too many, too, yeah, many. too many concepts where, you know, a lot of people get paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, especially in my audience, um, that came into the markets with ICT 2022, they have this, you know, idea that ICT traders are the best traders or, yeah. or the ICT traders, are the only ones who make money. Now, um, you know, you, you obviously are walking proof and we have other people like Robbie, right? Yeah. Robbie is walking proof that, you know, and some of the biggest traders I know in terms of like how much money they're trading with, not prop firms, like we're talking like actual capital yeah. and um, you know, how much money they're making, you know, um, you guys are, are walking proof that you can kill it without ICT. So for an ICT trader who is learning and they're struggling and they're overwhelmed by all the concepts, what would be your biggest advice? To them? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is one of the easiest things to answer. It is. And I'm going to start by saying, when my introduction to ICT came and SMC concepts, one thing that I noticed immediately was the terminology for a lot of the very similar concepts that people deem as retail mm -hmm. can be very cross communicated. They're almost the exact same thing, but ICT and SMC traders, and I'm not going to you know, say that ICT himself is making these terminologies, but there's so many terms that are the exact same across the board, but just labeled in a completely different way. And it confused the hell out of me. And one of the things I want to say is stick with the core concepts. Don't overcomplicate your trading at all. And you'll be able to have more chart time without paralysis and this is something that you go into a lot is that paralysis by analysis that you'll have and truthfully the more chart time you have the better you'll get over time and that's the name of the game the more time you have in the gym the stronger you're going to get the more chart time you have following same concepts over and over figuring out your edge is going to be how you're going to make it in the end you're not going to make it by watching a thousand videos every single day you need that time in the market yeah it's crazy i don't know did you see it? i tweeted literally about what you just said like i, I right before i know you haven't seen it because we were like together it yeah. was when we were at the coffee shop i tweeted um it was basically saying like you know there's nothing that's going to replace 
reps, right? Like Absolutely. you can read, you know, trading in the zone 50 times. You can go read a bunch of self-help books. You can back test. None of that is going to make you money um, like putting in the reps and spending yep. time on the charts. And that's where you learn the discretion that you need because, you know, another thing I think with ICT is that a lot of people want like fully mechanical strategies. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I don't think that there are always gonna, there's always going to be subjectivity, right? And you have to learn that discretion from experience in order to be able to apply all of these mechanical aspects of a strategy. Yeah. So, um, you know, back to your story, you, you came up super hard, 500K, you round tripped half of it in futures. And that was in 20, when, when you round tripped? 2018. 2018. Yeah, yeah, 2017, we had the massive, beautiful bull run, yeah. brought crypto to the forefront, and then quickly fizzled away. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people remember the, a massive drop from 17,000 to about 3K, and then hovering around there. Yeah. Crypto's dead was a narrative at that point. Yeah. So after round tripping half million dollars down to a quarter million dollars, what did you have to tell yourself to stay consistent and not give up? Oh man, that was hard. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be very honest. Like there was a time where I did give up for multiple months where I'm like, you know, maybe this actually isn't for me. And I did get very lucky in the beginning, but the thing that's actually going to make me change here is that I did have the opportunity in the first place to make those initial investments. And now I have the opportunity again, in order to correct the mistakes that I had before majorly not taking profits, not realizing any of my gains. And that's one of the things that I hold to this day is if I'm going to have a strategy, if I'm going to be trading, I need to consistently be able to take profits home. And I think a lot of traders listening to this right now don't do that and understand that if they looked back at their trade logs and how much profit they had at a certain period of time, if I had a thousand dollar p on the screen, it doesn't matter as much if I had a thousand dollars on my table. And mm -hmm. a lot of people need to understand that if you had it in front of you in cash, it feels a lot different than the numbers on the screen. So that's one thing that I would do completely differently is understand that the numbers on the screen don't mean as much as maybe if it was in front of me. So I need to realize that this is real money on the screen. This is something that can change my life. And this is something that if consistently over time I compound these gains, it's going to be life changing. It's not like a salary I get every month. I have to work for that profit. So a lot of people, when they see one, two, three, four on the screen, it doesn't mean as much as a few dollars that were on the table. So yeah. understand that that's real money. And that if you had the exact same amount of the green pin on your screen as cash on your table, chances are you're going to take it. Yeah, I love that. I've actually never thought of it like that. Like you know, kind of visualizing like, because I, I think that a lot of times when traders make stupid decisions, they have that intuition that they're making a stupid decision and then they make any like, this is different. This time is different. I'm, I'm going to be the, the exception, right? Yes. You know, they're sitting there thinking, should I, I, I should take this. And then you see it in discord communities, like in play, but you'll see, um, from time to time, like people that are really, you know, on a hot streak that maybe, um, may or not may or may not have made that hot streak from like complete scale or some yeah. level of luck. And then they're like, Sh what should I do with this? And position? that's a dangerous game. Yeah. That, that's a dangerous game of itself because I've been subject to it many times where I will yeah. go on a hot streak and I'll think that my edge is absolutely perfected right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll continue in markets that may not give me the exact same edge. And this is why I say that you need like a seasonality of a malleable strategy. Your strategy is not going to work in every market. The same strategy you're using right now in a vertical accumulation market that we have in this bull run is not going to be the same in a crab market where you need to be maybe scalping on a lower time frame. Yeah. So if you have a malleable strategy that can work in different environments, dude, you're going to kill it and you're going to be able to survive in any type of environment. Yeah, no, I agree hundred percent, man. And you know, so we, we've went over that, you know, you, you don't really trade, like you trade some ICT, you use like liquidity structure and fair value gaps, liquidity which, and market structure, fair value gaps, man. And I, yeah, yeah I think, you know, my stance on that. And I think yeah, there is yeah. the base root of what all you need. So if you are talking to someone who is somebody who understands trading, like they understand ICT trading, how would you explain, you know, and just and just for for a little bit of uh, uh, kind of preemptive, you know, I guess uh, verified profits. This because this works, right? Some people hear this and they won't believe. Like, oh, how much is this guy making? Like, yeah. How much have you made just in the last this little last bull run? Yeah. So starting in November, uh, I've done back to back plus thirty R plus forty five R, and then even on this month, you know, we're only a few days in, but I'm up eight R already. And you know, a lot of people don't even understand the idea of plus thirty plus forty five R. But to me, that means November was a ninety thousand profit month. That means December was almost one hundred and twenty thousand dollar profit month. Yeah. You know, like it is intense for people to actually get their risk to reward strategy down and just collect ours at the end of the day. And that's one of the most beautiful things that I actually got from all the ICT and SMC community was, you know, it doesn't matter how much money I make, how much R and risk am I collecting over time? And that's really what changed a lot of my trading in the last year. And that's something I tell a lot like veteran traders is like, we can still learn a lot. ICT is fairly new. You know, I've been, it was trading before ICT was ever popular. And I started yeah. to incorporate some of the concepts into my own trading, which definitely changed and increased my edge in the market. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So that being said, since you've made, you know, an average of around 30 R or 90 K a month, 
what, if you had to put that strategy into as few words as possible to an ICT trader, how yeah. would you explain it? Yeah. Uh, first thing is a uh, macro time frame outlook, right? I'm on high time frames figuring out where is the bias. And the second thing I'm looking at is a lot of people know that I trade the uh, 200 EMA as a daily market structure, giving me the bias for the daily. Um, after that, we're looking at where's liquidity, right? Where do we need to take out stops in order to make the next move? And then uh, I use a bias breaker. Whereas if market structure is shifting, I'm just going to follow where the shift is going and not try to trade against the market at all. And if I can find an inefficiency in the market, i.e. order blocks or fair value gaps, that's where we want to take entry. And that's as simple as it gets. It is finding the market structure on a high time frame. Is there a bias shift? If there is, was there an inefficiency formed before it? If there was, I'm going to take entry and target the next daily highs. Yeah, that's actually super similar to trader main strategy because you, you, where your entries are like four hour and up, right? Four hour and up. Yeah, yeah that's unheard of. A lot of these guys are like, they're shuddering at that. They haven't even been on a four hour. They're on the one minute yeah. to the 15 minute. You and know? I will say to a lot of those traders that do do that small time frame scalping, I know it works and gives you a lot more opportunities, of course, because the market is giving you more candles. But if you do want high time frame and less I would say stress. Yes. Right. Stress uh, definitely occurred to me on low time frame scalping, 15 minute, five minute, one minute. I don't actually know how a lot of traders do it proficiently over the long period of time. And I would definitely put my money and argue that they're not as profitable long term as someone swing trading like I am. Yeah. 90% of my trades I'm holding for more than five days. Yeah. No, and, and you've killed it. And, and another thing too, everybody, like, this is all done publicly. This is like, you know, this has been done in the Discord. It's not like this is you're a, taking yeah. private trades and not Absolutely. like you're posting all of them, which I have a lot of respect for. You were for. here from the beginning to see it all too. Yeah, man. Yeah, every bull run. And, and that's why it's crazy because you trade a lot of options and you do well with options and everything. But like, I know literally, like there needs to be a fucking Playboy indicator whenever you start getting super active. And, and, and the thing that I like about you too is you don't conform to kind of like, like you manage risk properly but you also know when the fuck to turn up the gas i love that you brought that up you know what i mean because yeah. that's another thing that i think that a lot of ict traders you know when you learn and, and whenever i'm teaching people like you know i always say you should risk a consistent amount like a lot of my private students like i'll share a little bit more of a, a different a kind of aggressive risk mm -hmm. risk strategy um because you got to be careful when you're talking to a new trader and if you explain like you know, like, like, let's be honest, like, do I always risk 1% on a trade? Absolutely not. Right. Um, you have, and as you grow as a trader, you will know when it's time to put your foot on the gas and you do a very good job of that. And people, you know, like it, when you're really sure on something and you know, you've had a good year and you have, you know, other incomes, other businesses that kind of can supplement and give you a little bit more of a cushion, you can say, Hey, you know, I'm going to up my risk because I've been around a time or two, you know, it's been three bull runs in a row. You've killed it with crypto. And like, there are some times where like, you'll be in like five to 10 longs at once. Like, yep. and like theoretically could the market come and just sweep and really hit you? Like it could, but 100%. you know, over time that that works, you have your edge. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get stuck in uh, the robotic uh, kind of mentality that like oh, only one R only, you know, all these, you know, rules and, and while rules are important. Right. But once you get to a certain point, you, you understand that you're making decisions based on logic. You're not just, you know, some people hear this and say like, oh, Casper said rules don't matter. Yeah. I'm going to go. But it's just like use common sense, right? Like, uh, and, you know, but anyways, you've done a great job of just really putting your foot on the gas. And yeah. that, that's and another thing that if you want to talk to that about. Yeah, and I will yeah. backtrack a little bit to, I want, I want to say something about the mechanical of trading that you brought up. Yeah. Look, if your trading is too mechanical to a point and you're operating the strategy, I would say you're an idiot. At the end of yeah. the day, you can create a bot to trade your mechanical strategy. Because exactly. that's exactly what it is. And at the day, if you're trading a strategy that a bot could trade, why are you at the table trading? Why are you at your desk trading on a consistent basis? Again, if you're, uh, you know, Fully human, mechanical. Dude, if we're humans trading, we need to have some type of edge over that bot. And that's exactly where you talk about, you know, pressing the gas in different markets. And, you know, doing that recently with the altcoin run, watching Bitcoin break on high time frames with a lot of alt lagging behind, this is where I increase risk to 3R per trade instead of 1, 4R per trade instead of 1. And this is where I'm able to hit like massive, massive returns that normally I'm not able to hit in a crab market because I'm not increasing my risk. That's something that you're not going to do in a mechanical strategy and you miss out on such great returns that you wouldn't see before. And that goes back into the idea, the seasonality of your strategy need, needing to be malleable. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And that's such an important, important skill to have if you really want to be, you know, like if you want trading to be your main source of income or a big source of income, you have to know when to make the most out of things. And you also have to know when to step back, right? Like you said, whenever the market's kind of consolidating, um, yes, you're going to trade. Yes, you're going to be able to find opportunities, yeah. but you're not going to be uh, as gung-ho about it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, so 
I guess backtrack a little bit, you know, you went, you started after you started trading and you were, you know, you were finding profitability and you had kind of learned from round tripping all that mm. cash. You started to trade publicly in the telegram. Yep. And I think that's cool too. Cause you, you did it free, right? You said, Hey, look, you know, and this is before trading. This is like early 2020, yes. right? This is before trading was like really in the spotlight as far as like internet hustles. Now everybody wants Definitely to trade. Definitely not saturated during that period. Yeah. You know, it was, and you didn't really have like a social media presence not at that at point. All. You just said, okay, I'm gonna make a telegram. Let's just trade. And then, you know, fast forward now, three years later, yeah. you know, there's been thousands of traders come through Playbit. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And it's been, uh, it's been a wild ride. So, you know, in that journey, like what are some of the biggest lessons you've learned, not only from, you know, your own trading, but yeah. seeing so many other people go through their journey, yeah. including myself. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I definitely take away, especially by going public with my trades is, um, after that liability was like taken off of myself and like I was placing on other people to take my analysis, right. And take my prowess for like what it was worth. Mm -hmm. And that's where my trading really started to change. And I noticed in the beginning, I sort of take less risk. I'm like, dude, I have thousands and thousands of eyes on me right now, watching my every move. And I don't want to be liable for them, you know, to trade or maybe take a loss because I mean, I think a lot of educators go through this. It's like what you're teaching oh, yeah. people is what they're going to use in the market and potentially lose off of. And that was a, you know, a hump that I had to get over very quickly. Is like I had to believe in myself and believe in the ability for me to like carry these people with me and teach them how to become proficient traders. And down the line, they form their own edge, which would then help me because a lot of people like such as yourself have taught me a lot of concepts in trading, even though I've been trading longer than a lot of these people. And that's a beautiful thing of it is like, that's what I take away from a lot of the trading over all the years is, dude, you can learn how to trade very quickly if you have the right mentor. If you have someone who's able to digest a lot of these concepts for you and boil them down simply, anyone can trade. Anyone can be proficient over the long term if they put in the work. Yeah, no, I love that, man. And one thing that you said that I 100% agree with, and I think it makes you a better trader as long as you stick with it, is when you start trading publicly, um, even, you know, calling out trades or trading live on a stream. Accountability is on you. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's like the stress level definitely raises. Um, you have two options. You can either, you know, you're going to make mistakes because of it, yeah. right? Like I made mistakes because of like when I first started giving out trades, um, and, and it's funny, I think like signals have a bad stigma. Um, I think that there is a, like the thing that, that that's different about Playbit is like, yes, there are signals, but there's also education, right? Yeah. Like if you just have some telegram chat where it's nothing but like buy now, buy here, that's really not doing anything for anybody in the long term. Yeah. But when you have a community of people to learn from, like you said, you're seeing other people, you're learning their lessons, you're all kind of talking and you're immersing yourself in trading. And, and I think that that's a huge part of like why I saw success um, yeah. was because I immersed myself with other people that were yeah. trying to, you know, some of them were successful, some of them weren't. Yeah. Some of those people are still here, some of them probably never talked to them again, but at that time, everybody was just so immersed in trading. Absolutely. And I think that's like such a huge value to anybody trying to learn. Yeah. You know? And a lot of it came from like, you know, not only is accountability now on me to have this public record of all my trades, but like, I know of accountability to like nurture a lot of the people that are like under my wing now to teach them how to trade properly and give them like the right path. Because not only is my accountability on, let's say per se, trade ideas that I give out that they'll follow, but my accountability is also in my ability to teach properly. There are amazing traders out there who actually have no idea how to teach. It's a skill in of itself to teach someone and to be able to teach your own strategy is very freaking stressful. And it was something that I had a very difficult time with in the beginning. I'm like, I can trade fantastically. I can make profit month to month, no problem. So giving out signals wasn't a problem, but I understood after a while that like I have accountability to nurture my trading audience and show them actually how to do this. And that was the next learning curve was like, how am I going to teach them in a way that, you know, it wasn't the exact way that I did it. Watching all these YouTube videos and my years of experience in the market, I had to figure out for myself how to become a teacher. So not only as a trade educator, but teaching people on a personal basis and nurturing your audience is a very important task for anyone going to be in the public eye. Yeah, no, and it makes you better. Like, uh, being able to kind of verbalize your strategy forces you to make it into a very clear process because a lot of times, like a lot of traders out there, they're just trading. Like they have no idea what they're doing. Some of them are making money like that. A lot of them aren't. And I think that the first step for somebody who's struggling in trading, um, not struggle, like, like, let's say they've been through the education, mm. they understand the strategies. Uh, they can watch them on a video, do them in hindsight. You know what I mean? But then when it comes time to execute, they, they don't make money. A lot of times you ask those people, hey, well, okay, what exactly is your process? And so like, they start trying to explain it. You could literally see like they have no idea. Yeah. So teaching, it forces you to really, you know, put that into steps and say, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing that. And it also kind of makes you look at everything twice because, you know, not only am I risking money, I'm other people are choosing to risk money on this. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but yeah, it's a huge, huge, huge teacher being a teacher. You know what I mean? And I think that, um, you know, when I started teaching in Playbit, right, when I started giving out trades, that uh, made me such a better trader, like yeah. streaming live, like calling things live as they're happening, being accountable to lose. It also gets you, it desensitizes you to losing because taking those first couple losses or like string of losses whenever you're doing it publicly, it hurts way worse than losing it alone. Oh God. Yeah. yeah you, you, you can tell me that. Uh, that was some of the <coughs> hardest times when, uh, you know, everyone's going to have winning streaks. Everyone's going to have losing streaks and the losing streaks hurt so much more in the public eye because you think that you're like losing your credibility as a trader. And it's more so, you know, a lot of new traders being like, dude, you shouldn't be losing three trades in a row. Like what's going on? I was like, this is the reality. And I'm going to show you the reality of trading and I'm not winning 99% of the time. And anyone that is, is going to be a grifting online and going to be selling you a dream because yep. I'm not here to sell you a dream. I'm here to sell you something that I've been doing consistently over the long term and you're going to see it. You're going to see the losses. You're going to see the wins. You're going to see how a true trader is going to have ups and downs throughout their career, even if they're a veteran. Yeah, dude. Like even this August, like a lot of trades I was calling, I had a horrible losing streak. I know you probably remember it. I was just like, and then there's like new people that don't really know me that are literally like, yo, this guy fucking sucks. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's just like seeing that now, now where I'm at, I kind of see it. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. Uh, we'll see here in like yeah, two, yeah. you know what I mean? And then, and then literally after that, I had the best month of my trading year. Yep. You know what I mean? But I know whenever that happened before, it was just so painful, dude, because I'm like, like you said, you're losing your credibility. These people are, you know, losing because of you. And, and then what happens is it, what it teaches you, it basically amplifies all of the hardships in the market and you yeah. learn so much faster because, you know, when you go on a losing streak in private, the hardest thing coming out of it is just executing the good trades. Cause you know, if you lose four or five, six trades in a row, even if your setup is so perfect on that seventh one, you don't trust yourself. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, you had that loss oh, aversion, dude, yes, you know? And then when it's public, dude, it's- Absolutely, and dude, it, it can so mess hard. with your mind. It can mess with your mind a lot of the time where like uh, losing streak in private almost means nothing to me. I'm like, I know that, you know, with a good risk reward strategy, I only need two trades to make up for these four or five that I've lost. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the public eye, it hurts a lot more because it's like, damn, like I've, I have five trades in the past two weeks and they've all been losers. And then the next week when everyone's not looking at the trades and I make a plus eight R trade or maybe half risk, it's like, <laughs> that's the ones they don't take. That's the ones they don't take. And, 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 you know, it's not that I feel bad for them. It's like, you know, I, I feel bad for myself that like maybe I risked less because, you know, I, I'm feeling ashamed of my trading right now. And, you know, it's a natural feeling and no one should be ashamed of it. But it is something that as humans, you know, us doing something wrong, right, quote unquote, even though it's not wrong in the veteran's eye. But yeah. Yeah. In the public eye, we're like, dude, maybe we should have a better win streak. Maybe we should be 99%, you know, profitable. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it gets through your head and you're able to move through it. And uh, a lot of that was me being an educator. And that's really what shaped me as a trader and finally refined my edge to a full degree where I can have a, you know, decently mechanical strategy throughout different market conditions now. Yeah, no, 100%. So um, kind of circling back again on your, in, back to your story, I know you said you got the opportunity to be an investor and in really England. one of the largest uh, Bitcoin ATM companies that yeah, is out Yeah, and there. one of the first ones ever to, uh, you know, the founder, Emilio, starting it uh, nine, ten years ago in New York. The first ever Bitcoin ATM in New York. And we have the video that we can uh, yeah. you know, post over from the chat. But it's, You'll uh, put it in the description. I, I, I'm, I'm so proud of it because it is like a pinnacle moment in like Unbank's history and also a pinnacle movement in the grassroots movement for pushing crypto forward to the masses. And I'm, you know, so blessed to be a part of that. Yeah, man. And, you know, just to kind of dig in and show people like what can happen. You know, a lot of people in their journey that are watching this, they're worried about, uh, not worried, but they're, they're focused on becoming a successful trader. But, um, you know, to any of those people that are in that position, you have to understand there are, there's more steps after becoming a successful trader. And yeah. I get it all the time. It's funny. People will say, uh, you know, oh, if you're a profitable trader, why do you have a YouTube? And I'm like, buddy, you got a lot to learn about money. Okay. Yes. Um, you're going to need to have more than one income stream. So, you know, taking your trading gains and then turning it into like, you know, how much you, you guys are grossed how much per month or was like what the Yeah. Most? So in uh, 2023, probably to say, you know, we started the year off grossing about $4 million a month. By the end of the year, we were averaging seven and a half million dollars. Yeah. And that's insane. So taking, you know, as a kid, not even knowing anything about trading, you get into Bitcoin, you make a half million, lose half of it. And somehow you learn how to trade and you take that money that you made from trading and put it into a business that ends up becoming a $7 million per month business. Mm -hmm. Like that is insane. So, um, you know, if you want to go a little bit deeper into that, I think people would love to hear like, okay, you know, yeah, like you went from, you know, buying into the company, now it's $7 million a month, but what does it look like? Like what are kind of the struggles or 
the uh, you oh, know, the day-to-day -day yeah, work, I mean, all the stuff you go through. Yeah, a lot of struggle. So I will say that, you know, I'm blessed to be a part of Unbank and I'm blessed to have such, you know, competent founders alongside me and competent partners because one of the struggles in the beginning were a lot of like toxic partnerships and a lot of maybe lazy partnerships. And I feel like any entrepreneur can go through this who started a startup before and maybe had lazy partners that ended up imploding the company. So when I came on, we did have some of that. And some of the struggles were with leadership roles, but uh, down the line when we did fix all those kinks, we came into something that uh, we occur every single month now, especially with crypto rising on markets, is uh, it's a lot of financial regulations, licensing, KYC policies that we have to become compliant with in every state. And crypto is rapidly changing. We have the ETH and Bitcoin ETF. I think getting approved like today. I think it's like supposed to be, right? Supposed or to be today it? or yesterday or very soon. It's you know, been definitely supposed to be. <laughs> quarter one, 2024, we'll see. But, uh, you know, as, you know, crypto goes mainstream, it affects our company directly. And some of the main problems are, you know, banking, financial regulations, KYC. But becoming compliant with our business isn't just a one-way road. It is becoming compliant every single month when something else comes out. Uh, that's one of the biggest struggles we had. And uh, I'm proud to say that we be become you know pretty successful at this and have a whole team dedicated to just becoming compliant and we're smooth sailing for the past two years now so it's been nice yeah that's that's sick man like you know i always tell people to uh you know trading it's trading in itself like if you're just trading alone uh it's not that fulfilling I mean, it's actually not fulfilling at all like yes it makes money you know what i mean and like once you meet your goal of becoming profitable that in itself is fulfilling yeah but you know three six months a year down the line when you've been making money consistently you don't really have, it's not really, um, I don't wanna say there's no purpose to it because you're providing for your family or yourself or whatever, but yeah. at the end of the day, you're not really making an impact on anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's what you do with the money that you make from trading. Do you build businesses? Do you do things that just kind of fulfills the human purpose, right? Absolutely. And I think that a lot of traders um, need to think about that as like, okay, well, once you, you know, once you succeed at this, like, what do you love doing, right? And like, you have a passion and belief for crypto yeah. and it's obviously taken you a long way. But I want to say to anybody that, you know, is listening to this and doesn't necessarily have that, like, really ask yourself, like, what do you like doing, right? Because almost anything in today's age, day and age can be monetized and you can make an impact on people and also build something really cool. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I think it's super inspiring to just hear, you know, your whole story going from barely knowing about trading, blowing all the accounts, look, you know, losing a quarter million dollars and yeah. then still now, you know, well over, you know, 10 x from yep. there, you know what I mean? So selling $65 million worth of Bitcoin a year. Yeah, That's it is, uh, insane, $65 it, million dollars a year. It's it's full circle and it's a humbling story because there was ups and downs the entire time. And I'm honestly really grateful for a lot of the people that I have around me and a lot of them who I met in very uh, odd ways, such Dota. as uh, you know, video <laughs> games, man. And it's it's something that I love telling people. I, I yeah. love the story and I love like the journey that I've been on. And that's something that I also want to tell a lot of traders is if you are trading alone and you're against trading communities, like that's fine, you know? I just want you to enjoy the journey and it's a lot easier to enjoy the journey with a lot of people pushing the wind behind your back and pushing you forward yeah man no i can't attest that enough because like you know eh, you know it's insane like my journey and and thank you because you know for creating playbit like i literally joined that group um had no idea what i was do like i knew what trading was and, like i'd been trading for a yeah. couple years i had been being a complete gambler for a couple years yeah and then once i saw so many people that were really doing it like that i was like oh this is not just some kind of gambling uh, thing, like a side hustle. Like these people are actually doing it. And I became serious at it. And, you know, thankful that I had a community, or, you know, thank God that I was in that community yeah. and stuck with it. I mean, if you would have told me, um, what is it, three years, over three years now, that I would have joined that community, became an educator, and then now like a full on partner. Yeah. And that's insane. And I think that it's inspiring to a lot of traders to see, like, hey, you know, I was literally in the same exact boat as most of the people who aren't profitable that are you know, listening to this, I literally joined a discord somehow from there ended up now I'm able to, you know, make content. I'm able to educate other people. I'm able to, you know, I mean, trading changed my life and like yeah. joining your group changed my life. So thank you for that, bro. I'm glad you to know? hear that. I mean, those are the stories that like literally builds me with happiness is knowing that the community, not only is it fulfilling proficient traders, but it's fulfilling a strong foundation for people in the rest of their lives. Like, you know, you're here today because you joined this community and you started learning and you were able to become a proficient trader, build your own edge and build your own personality out of it. And I'm really proud to see that happen in an ecosystem that I built. Thank you, man. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, I've seen a lot of other trading communities too. Um, and few have the same camaraderie that Playbit has. And what's funny about Playbit is like, you know, <laughs> yeah, camaraderie is a way it's like a it fucking, sure. it's like, it's like if you had the best people ever from like a COD lobby, like Modern Warfare two days. Yeah. 
but then everybody is making money. Yeah, <laughs> so no, just it's, like, uh, <laughs> like, like it's it's sick as hell, man. It is like, beautiful to see everyone come together and you know. It's a, have fun along the way, man. That's one yeah. of the things that I took from the community because I treat it as a very serious and formal thing in the beginning. Like, like guys, we can't be goofing off. Like, it's time to trade. But as they grew on me, it really made the journey easier. And I think the journey easier for a lot of people to learn in. Like, bringing the pressure down a little bit, it doesn't need to be too serious. We're not hedge fund managing billions of dollars right here. You know, we're trying to learn how to be proficient traders for our private funds. And yeah. the camaraderie <laughs> helped all of that mesh well together. And I love being in there every day. Even if I'm not trading that day, I just love being there with the community. Yeah, and I think there's a great lesson to be had from that is that if you can blend education with entertainment and fun, your brain will learn better. Like, so I think about that whenever I'm, you know, working more directly or like, you know, I try to keep like a fun vibe to things. Like obviously, you know, keep it focused on, you know, we're all focused on the end game goal at the, at the end of the day, but yeah. you gotta have fun. Like, you know, you have to, if you're not, and like I, I tweeted this one time ago, and I got a lot of mixed reviews on it. I put, if you're not having fun while trading, um, you know, you're not doing it right. And I think people took it the wrong way. Like they think that I'm saying, you know, if you're not like Jordan Belfort, like getting hype, I'm not saying yeah, yeah. that. But if you're not having, enjoying the journey and like really embracing everything that comes with it, you know, it's not always going to be just, you know, like flowers and daisies and stuff, yeah. you know. But if you don't have fun and appreciate the goal, like I think that it's going to take a lot longer to learn. Now, another interesting thing about you is, you know, everybody's, all into prop firms, right? All into prop firms. Never even bought a prop firm and Never. seven figure trader. Yeah. And it's crazy. And it's something that I, I love that you brought up because I did notice with like the advent of SMC and ICT concepts coming up, prop firms also kind of grew alongside it, if I'm not mistaken. They kind of. It was like it, the same. It kind of, it, I don't know if it was like direct, I, they, but it, it just happened at they the same are, time. They are honestly the same thing to me. When I think of ICT traders in the community of SMC concepts, I think of prop firms at the exact same time. And I think it's because ICT did such a good job at teaching his audience that there was also a community, the prop firm community, that kind of took advantage of all these people that you know wanted immediate size to their accounts and immediate access to large you know funds if they're able to trade proficiently. And that 2022 mentorship did that for a lot of people and prop firms flourished from there. So yeah. I would say that if you look at a you know comparison chart between ICT's presence and prop firms' presence, they'd be a very linear and just pretty similar time frame of them growing together. Oh yeah, no, for sure. And like what's crazy with ICT is like like I mean, even before, remember in the Discord, we used to talk about like 2022, it was like ICT became mainstream. Yeah. But like way back we were talking about like I remember like me um, Algo, like yep. Flow. There's a couple other people that were like pretty early on ICT before it was like all, you know, mainstream. Um, but then, like you said, like the, the mainstream uh, uprise of ICT was right beside prop firms. You know yep. what's actually crazy? You know how long FTMO, like Top Step and FTMO, I think Top Step's been around since 2011. So I learned that. You just told me this fact yeah, the other day. No one knows. And I was insane. completely surprised because yeah. who has heard of prop firms post like 2020, right? Pre, yeah. pre 2020, 2019, 2018. I can't ever remember hearing the word prop firm. It, they were different though. They were way different. They yeah. were not like, I mean, they're still not easy, but they were like, they're a lot easier now yeah. than, than they were then. So, um, you know, trading from kind of like the outside in, like looking at like this whole like mania, like all these new traders, especially coming to the community with prop firms and ICT, what do you think are some of the common, you know, obviously it gives some advantages, right? To somebody yeah. who is proficient, but 100%. what are some of the disadvantages of starting trading in this day and age where prop firms, ICT, and everything is such like a social scene. Oh man, yeah, so I'm gonna start out first by talking about prop firms and a problem I see with the prop firms continually. Um, I think that they're probably one of the best tools for a lot of traders to use in the event that you actually know what you're doing, right? <laughs> key, um, key element there. Because uh, some, something I teach a lot of my traders is that like demo accounts isn't something that I actually will recommend most of the time. And if you're not trading your own private funds first, I don't think that maybe going to a prop firm immediately is the best idea. Start out trading your own private funds for the first few months, become proficient there, and then move into a prop firm because I think it gives you a guaranteed advantage in the market by being a proficient trader, being able to pass the challenge, and having immediate access to more funds. Because you're going to make more. If your strategy works on a $100 account, the strategy is going to work on a $100,000 account. So start out a little bit smaller first, and then move into prop firms because you're going to have a great time. Yeah, dude, I can't agree more. Or I can't agree more. Like, so many people I see that are new to the space and they have access to prop firms, it's almost like a very toxic it's like this carrot that's just getting dangled above your head and people think like oh i just gotta watch ict a thousand times 
put in four or 500 bucks, get my 100K account, I'm gonna make 10R a month, and yeah. now I'm making, it's, dude, it's not gonna work like that. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's a definitely a toxic headspace to be in, where you do the 2022 mentorship, or you take a mentorship program, you become a little proficient in trading, you're like, all right, now the next step is passing a prop firm, and I'm set. I'm set to do this. Yep. You know, the, the goal is really to, you know, not only pass a prop firm, get a payout. And you said this the other day to me, it was like, you know, passing a prop firm at the end of the day is getting the, to the payout. And there's such a low percentage of people getting to the payout. I think that a lot of people are going incorrect about the path when they go to prop firms, trade private funds for a while maybe a few months, six months, and then get into prop firms. It's probably the best way that you can do it because you need the emotion of trading your own funds at first because you're trading someone else's funds at the end of the day for prop firms, but it can be very advantageous if you understand the emotion in trading. Yeah, no, 100%, man. Like, you know, prop firms are hard. They are. They're hard because you know that there is a very high potential of return that you can make. So it already amplifies the pressure that's already there from trading. Yeah. But if you just, I always tell people, like, Demo trading, I, I think it's damn near useless. I think if anything, I agree. back test very lightly, like even back testing, like I, I've had people say, I'm on my ninth uh, you know, trial of back testing. We've got a hundred trades in each trial. And I'm like, Why? what are you doing? Yeah. Just go fucking trade. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And you don't have to go risk your ass. Like, okay, let's say if your net worth is $10,000 put, and you get a, you know, maybe a thousand dollar paycheck every two weeks or something. We're just using round numbers here. Go put a thousand dollars in a personal account. Right, like just get the feeling of having something real at risk without having this carrot dangled over your head that, oh, if you pass this challenge, your life's gonna change. Because yeah. another thing that I think that that does to people is people, they look at a prop firm almost like a job. Like it's like a career. Like brother, listen, if you want certainty, you're in the wrong game. Like if you ever want something that's gonna be a career, like you're in the wrong industry because yeah. no matter how good you get, like we've even seen some of the best traders who have, you know, millions of dollars in funding lose all their funding. Yeah. You don't have a job. You have an opportunity um, that you can hit really hard and you can also lose really hard. You know what I mean? So I think that that's another thing that people need to reshape their perspective as, you know, there is no certainty in this game. There's understanding when you have opportunities and understanding how to manage your risk because at the end of the day, nothing is guaranteed, you know? Yeah, not at all. So, a common question I always get asked, and I think it's interesting to hear is like, let's say right now you have, you, you, you had to go back to before you even um, had been in that game lobby and yeah. before you had bought Bitcoin, before you even knew what it was, speaking to that, that kid, right? Yeah. If you were to start trading again and you were to give that person advice, what would you say? Okay, this is, uh, I love answering this because I have maybe controversial opinion, but probably the safest one and the one that everyone should be taking. If I'm going to, maybe I'm interested in trading at something I want to take up, get a fucking nine to five, get some fucking stable income under you to start, then start trading. Don't think that trading is your way out of the rat race immediately because it could ruin your life pretty fast if you don't know what you're doing. Have a nine to five have something stable under you. You're not gonna be making a real estate investment and have passive income. I mean, I'm a young kid, let's go from there, right? I'm a young kid, I don't have any passive income, I don't have parents to support me, I'm getting a nine to five. I'm using my off time to learn a new skill, to build a side stream of income, and then when that side stream of income can make three to four X, the monthly income I made from the nine to five, then we can look to do a transition. And that's absolutely the path I would take. And something I think not a lot of people talk about, but to get a fucking nine to five. It is not the end of the world, and it's something that can be very safe for a lot of people, and is the right way to go. There's like a stigmatism behind the nine to five that Andrew Tate does. You know, yeah. this, this is going to stabilize you to then become that person you want to be. What do you think you're going to do? You know, trade with pennies that you made panhandling on the side of the road, then go you know, trade with that? Get a nine to five, man. It's yeah. okay. Life gets better after it and it's a start. Yeah, no, and I think that this, this touches on another topic that I want to go in. And, and basically the, the I think key takeaway there is that if, if trading is, when you're learning trading, if you're relying on trading it to, to change your life or to pay for your bills or to take care of your family, yeah. you're at a huge disadvantage. Because if you don't have kind of a nest egg, like, hey, what happens if I lose my account? What happens if I don't pass this challenge? What happens if I lose money trading this month? If, if that is going to affect your survival, I think that you're at a huge disadvantage and you're most likely to become a statistic of a failing trader. Yeah. So, you know, key takeaway there is have a cushion. Now, speaking to somebody who is maybe profitable. They're a boom and bust trader. Like they make money, but then they kind of lose it. Yeah. Um, 
what do you think about somebody in that position starting like a side hustle or starting yeah. getting some other income? Yeah, yeah. So I'll say if you're a boom and bust, you're going back and forth. Maybe, you know, you got a plus 30,000 P and L and you lose half of it at the end of the month. You know, you're, you're struggling trading. Uh, first thing is refine your edge. Uh, the next thing is if you are bringing profit home and you're, you know, bringing at least, you know, an annualized return to pay taxes on, you know, a side income is probably the best thing you can do because I like to say that trading is not the end goal here. We're not here to become traders from 20 to 70 years old. We're here to have an opportunity in front of us, which is trading to produce an income based off of risk. So our reward is a lot higher here in order to produce passive assets and side streams of income, become entrepreneurs from that. Because a lot of the skills, and I know you talk about this a lot, a lot of the skills that we learn from trading are very manageable within an entrepreneurial space. Mm -hmm. So if you're already profitable, you're making good money, it's time to look at some other streams of income. Because if you're sitting on one stream of income, it can get very risky after a long period of time. Look into other things, look into real estate, look into ATMs, look into becoming an educator. A lot of these things can help boost your lifestyle and increase your net worth over time. Yeah. And I think it's a funny thing. Like I've started to notice you, you see a lot of people in the community that hate on people making money uh, from business, like whether it's in trading or oh, just, my favorite haters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They'll just say like, you know, um, you like we were saying earlier, if you're, if you're a profitable trader, why do you have a YouTube or it, why do you do this? Why do you sell education? And you know, what's funny is the only people who are saying that are the people who don't make money in trading. And if you go talk to anybody, talk to, I've never found one person that is successful at trading that makes money, that if you said, hey, do you think it's a good idea to have other businesses? I've never met one that would say no. It's, uh, it's one of the redundancies of the conversation that I love for people to talk about. Um, I don't get asked it enough and there's not enough. I, you know, I, I think it's like the, uh, the facade of that hater being around. I don't know if there's too many anymore, but they're out there still. Oh, they are you out know, there. They're definitely they're out probably going to be in the comments after I said that there will be multiple people that say something. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's just the funniest one is like, you know, if you make so much money trading, you know, why are you, why are you selling education or why do you have a private group? And at the end of the day, it's the same thing as being a college professor. It's like, maybe you're tenured in, you're making 200000 a year. You got a lot of off time in the summer. Maybe you go work at a lab. Why are you you're making so much of being tenured? Why are you going to go work in a lab after? Yeah. I have another side income here. I mean, I have a skill that I'm selling to the lab and they need me and I'm going to make another $200,000 during the summer. It's the same thing with educators. I mean, if you have a skill that you're able to monetize, if you don't do it, I think it's the iterocracy of the public to think that. Yeah. They would do it every time if they were in your shoes and if they understood that they're helping other people. And let's say that there are a lot of grifters out there not doing it. So there is a bad name in the space over that. But there's a lot of good players. Right. And, and there is a lot of grifters. So I, I get it. I think like between the fact that trading is very low success, like a lot of people fail trading. And on top of that, there is a lot of scams in trading. Yeah. People kind of have a scapegoat and there there's an easy way to victimize themselves to the evil gurus. When in reality, you know, or, or like prop firms, I see it a lot. People yeah. always, like I was talking to Angelo when he was sitting right there and it was funny. I was like, you know, a lot of people think bad of you. And he's like, oh, I'm painted as the devil, which is true. And Angelo's a good guy. Like yeah. I like Angelo. And a lot of people look at it, they're like, this guy is just like, you know, some predatory prop firm owner. And it's just number one, like being a victim, like you're never going to be successful in literally anything, much less trading. Yeah. Um, and two, like, you know, people will make the decision to either buy a prop firm or, you know, watch YouTube. It's always ironic because it's the people that are watching your videos that will comment and like talk shit. It's like, why are you here then? Yep. Or like the even the funnier one. Um, like in the public telegram, like I used to have people, they would just like be in there like talking shit. I'm like, bro, you're in a public, you've gone so far to go into a telegram. It's not just like on a comment, like yeah. you've joined a community to just grift and talk shit. But, um, yeah, anyways, um, and I definitely want to piggyback off that real quick and say something where like, I think a lot of the people in the space that you can, uh, you know, if you're trying to sort out good from evil, a lot of the people that base their businesses around longevity and their transparency with their community. And if they've been around for a long time, there's a good idea that they are one of the good guys in the space, especially with like a trade idea group like Playbit, right? I could not survive in this market or the Playbit wouldn't be around for so long if it wasn't doing good for the public or if it wasn't so transparent and open with the audience. We would fail within the first few months as people understood they're in the group and they're like, dude, this sucks. Like, why would I do this? But because we've been around for so long, the notoriety and our reputation goes up immediately because we would fail increasingly faster if we were grifting. Yeah, no, 100%. I don't think I know of any group that's been around for that long. Like, yeah. genuinely, I don't know. I don't Absolutely. think I know of any group that's been around for three years. So, you know, whenever you were trading BitMEX, you lost that bread, and then you started to trade and you became profitable. What do you think was the biggest turning point or biggest aha moment from going from not making money to, you know, making a lot of money? 
Yeah, it's a simple answer. It is a, a consistent risk model. That's truly what it was. Uh, before that, I was maybe, you know, it's like, let's do 5,000 on this trade. I feel good about it. Let's do, let's do 8,000 on this trade. I feel good. I'm only going to do 500 on this one. The inconsistency with my risk is really what threw my P&L curve all over the place. And as soon as I started setting like the risk model of 1R, 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 maybe 2R if I feel a bit more confident, completely changed the entire game. And that's what I teach a lot of the time is like, if your risk model is proper and you have a decent refined edge, I mean, what's stopping you from being profitable at the end of the day if you're able to consistently and discipline yourself to follow that? So that's yeah. what changed it, man, the risk management model, <laughs> and I'm sure it changed it for you too. Yeah, no, honestly, it's so funny. Um, whenever I look back, even when I was profitable, like I wasn't really consistently profitable, I was more boom and bust. Like back when I would trade harmonics, yep. I was just looking at a trade and I would just be like, okay, because I was trading crypto futures. So you can just pick how much of your portfolio which is like the worst fucking way. The to slider, size, dude. The yeah. slider is so toxic. <laughs> demonic, bro. I, I have a rug in my room of the Binance slider because yeah. it is it is demonic. It's like, dude, maybe I do 25% today. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it, can't, it should not be this easy. Why is it? Yeah, I was like, why do they make it so easy? Like you can literally, there's notches for you to go quarter port yes. in a trade. Yes, and like you can feel like the haptic <laughs> feedback. I'm like, this feels good, man. Yeah. Maybe I'm going 50% today. No, like I used to just put um, 5%. <clears throat> <clears throat> no, yeah, I just used to put 5% of my account, yeah. no matter what the stop loss was. And one of the biggest turning points from being, uh, you know, making a lot of money and then losing a lot to having a consistent equity curve was just risking my, or adjusting my risk based on the stop loss, right? Um, and with a lot of people in crypto futures, I feel like they don't do that. Because in, oh, I feel no. like in Forex or futures, it's a lot easier to size your positions based off your stop. Because, yeah. you know, okay, if I'm on a standard lot, I've got $10 per pip per standard lot at yeah. risk. If you're trading futures, you know, I've got, you know, 20 bucks per NASDAQ contract per risk. You know how much you want to, I mean, it's really easy to say, oh, I know how much I'm risking on this trade. Yeah. But crypto futures, you know, you're like, oh, well, I'm on 10x leverage. I have this much of a stop loss. Yeah, like, uh, how many percent of the, my position? Oh, love, you know, it's, it's hard. I love that you brought you know? that up. Yeah, I it's harder. That you that. But one of the things that actually helps me a lot was like, okay, so my risk is going to be uh, in standardly is $1,000 per trade. So whether my stop loss is minus 16% away or minus 1% away, it's $1,000 every single time. And that's what changed it for me. I was like, I know when I lose a trade, how much I'm losing. And I know how many times if I win a trade, three R is $3,000, five R is $5,000. You know, an eight R trade is, you know, eight grand for me. It was so easy for me to manage risk and understand over the long period of time. If I lose three trades and I have an average gain of about 5R, I make one win and I've covered the three losses plus 2R on top of that. And that's when trading became fun because I was able to like analytically analyze 10,000 trades and see like, all right, where, where am I going wrong? You know, if I'm losing too many trades in a row, something was wrong with that strategy during that period. Yeah, and you, you've been trading for long enough to have data like that. A lot of traders don't even have data like that yeah. much. You know I would say, I mean? you know, if you have a thousand trades of data, you have a lot to analyze and you can pretty much refine your strategy immediately. And it's real trades too. Like a lot of people will say like, oh, I have this much data on a back test. I, I hate that because like I see it a lot. Like there's these super complex models that need eight different things to align. And yes, when you back test it, maybe it's up ADR over this many years. But the problem is there was nobody actually executing that. There yeah. wasn't all of the other, you know, external factors at play. Like, okay, what kind of mindset were you in that day? Uh, did you, you know, maybe you slept in one of these days over how, a thousand trades. I'm sure there was times yeah. where you weren't by the desk. I'm sure there were times where your psychology was bad. Yeah. So all that stuff is cool, man. Like I think backtesting has its place to determine, hey, either I know what I'm doing or I completely don't. Past that, um, I think that, you know, when people have all this data, it's good. I, I think it, what matters is, is this profitable over time or is it not? Mm. If you have all these super, super crazy res returns, like I'll see people that'll have like, oh, this strategy yields 80% a year. That's great. Um, let's see you go do it now. No, you so, might, you might. But so you implement that into a bot and then implement the trades, right? That's right? Like at the end of the day, it's, it's something that I will always say to traders who have formed a mechanical strategy, one, you know, competent enough to be able to put into a algorithmic program to trade for them. Because yeah. if it is that mechanical, why are you not doing that? Yeah. If it made 80% of the last year, why are you not putting it in an algorithm and trade for you? Because you know how mechanical it is. You back tested it over a year with trades. Put it into AI. Put it into a bot to trade. Oh, you can't? Okay, then don't tell me it made 80% of the year. Exactly. And then it's like we all know about trading bots. Yep. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, that was a huge wave in like 2018, 2019. And it just oh, it absolutely still is, grifted dude. the entire market. Uh, it, 
I would never touch them with a 10 foot pool. Yeah. And I think that like, we all know, yes, there are profitable trading bots out there, but trust me, people that have profitable trading bots, they either sell them to hedge funds or they start hedge funds. Trust me, dude, they're getting sold to quants. They're not getting yeah. sold to the public on Bybit copy trading. For $79, <laughs> 275 bucks, make a hundred R. I was watching this TikTok video recently. I did like a YouTube video reacting to TikToks. And this kid was like, this is how I made $28,000 a week using AI or something. And it's just like crazy to me that people will fall for that. But you know why? Is because people want that easy overnight rich. And then the same people yeah. that go and buy something like that will complain about being scammed. Yeah. And I just say like, you had to be scammed. Like if that's what you truly believe is possible, you need somebody out there to scam you. It was a part of your path. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because you had to learn that that shit isn't real. Like, yeah. you know, um, I think everybody goes through that at some point and to some degree and it's understandable, but for anybody listening to this that, you know, maybe is even thinks that that stuff's possible, just know that after you hear this, if you go out and still get scammed, that's on you. Yeah. There's the evil out in the world. There are scammers out in the world. There are grifters out in the world. It's your choice whether to interact with them or not. Yeah. Most of the time, if you see somebody who just has, you know, a gazillion dollars and all they ever show is profits and they, all they ever want to do is sell you something and they don't show you any value, yeah. they're probably scamming. That's why I've made it such a big point. Um, you know, like more recently I've started to make some lifestyle content just yeah. for fun and to show people like, Hey, this is what I'm doing just cause you know, I think it's cool. And also it shows you like, Hey, I'm not just drawing lines on a chart. Like I'm actually out here living a, of this. A, yeah. Yeah, a good life. Um, but I do think that, you know, the reason that I have built such a strong community and audience is that I gave so much fucking free value, just charts, just, Hey, this is how you do this. Here's a strategy. Here's how, you know what I mean? And then you go to a lot of these guys, they don't have any of that. Absolutely. And then these guys are the ones that are doing the most in sales. And it just goes to show it's almost like a case study of the human psyche. And that's that people, they want to, they want lifestyle. They don't even want to put the work in. They just want the outcome goal. And that's why trading has such a high <sighs> failure rate. Yeah. You know? No, absolutely. And, and I will say that uh, that's something that I respect with anybody <laughs> online in the event that they're going to sell something is if you're able to offer your prowess and maybe your trading analysis for free or whatever it's going to be, your sales pitch and your sales techniques, if you're able to offer this for free and teach a massive audience to show them that you're actually authentic and do something good for the public without putting a paywall behind it at first to prove yourself, I have respect for you and I'll probably buy your product at the end of the day yeah. because you've proved it to me and now I know that the product you're going to sell me is also going to work. And this is, you know, you know you're taking a piece of the play for play but too is yeah, like yeah. you know it's something that we had to do in the beginning we had to prove to people that you know we aren't a fake guru and we are authentic and that you can watch us for free for eight months you know we almost just the entire year to show people that like look look for eight months there's going to be a lot of different trends in this market and we're going to show you that we can pretty much navigate all of them and we want you to do it alongside us without ever having a penny come out of your pocket and then at the end when we do put a paywall behind it we'll still have a bunch of free content but you're going to know our value and you're going to know that it's going to be worth something yeah. And that's, I mean, even now there's a free trial. Like, yeah, and that's still. one thing that, you know, I think is just, it speaks volumes. Like a lot of these groups, they want you to buy a three month membership yeah. for like some crazy amount when literally you can just join Playbit for free essentially yeah. for the first couple of days and be like, Hey, Dude, is for this two a weeks. good fit? For yeah. two weeks, man. It's like, like, we'll give you half the month to understand our value. We don't need your money, but if you see our value and you would like to be a part of our great community, you'll get to see it for two weeks. And that's yeah. like plenty of time. A few days is enough time to understand the value immediately. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I mean, there's like, you know, I think with any good group, uh, you know, if you're in there for two weeks and you don't make enough money to, and you have a sizable amount of money you're trading with, not, not sizable, but like even like a thousand bucks, yeah. you know what I mean? And if you don't make the money to pay for the group, it's probably not a good group. Exactly. You know exactly. I mean? And that's why we do it. So you can prove it to yourself. We have nothing to prove to you. You can prove it to yourself by not giving a penny to us and understanding how the inner workings of the group work. And you get to make your own decision from there. Yeah. I, th I think everyone should, should be a standard in the market to give people a, an extended free trial just so you can prove to people that you're not faking anything and that you actually have value to offer them. Yeah, no, 100% agree, man. So back to like, you know, when you, when you finally started to become profitable, um, this is just kind of like a random question. Like, yeah, yeah. What were some of the first things that, you know, because I, th I think everybody who kind of like comes across money, they end up like going through like oh, a little come buying on, spree. Man. Yeah, come on. <laughs> and, yeah, it happens and, to all of us, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, no, 100%. So like what are some of the, what, what was like the first thing you bought? Like once you made yeah. a lot of money from trading, what was that first impulse buy? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how many people do this, but I had plans, right? I was like, when I make money, I'm buying this. When I make money, I'm buying that. So I did go through the splurge phase when I did have a sizable income. Uh, first thing I bought was a 2001 Honda S2000. It was like <laughs> my favorite car 
car from the Fast and the Furious series, Too Fast, Too Furious in Tokyo. I was like, I'm buying this. I'm buying the best version of it, the lowest miles. And I want to keep it for my kid one day. It's the first thing I bought. And then, you know, I went down the designer path, buying all these designer clothes, very unfulfilling after a while. And I got the splurge out, so I never have to do it again. And from there, it's been cars, 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 cars. So I've been collecting cars for quite some time. And that was really like the uh, toxic habit of my spending for a while. You had some pretty sick ones. Like one thing that uh, I admire about you that I'm not very good at is you buy cars that don't depreciate. Yeah, so that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a cool thing about that is, yeah, I've been able to flip all of the cars I've owned for profits. And, that's crazy, you know, there's man. there's even a method behind that, too. There's a method behind any market and such as buying and selling cars to have fun with and selling them for a profit down the line. Yeah, and, and another thing, too, that I almost we didn't even touch on, speaking of like, you know, that's one thing that you're good at is you, you have different hobbies, but you always are like able to, even if it's not like huge, crazy money, you're able to, to like cars, you had a nice car that you enjoyed. Yeah. And then you were able to sell it for a profit yeah. or even just selling it for a small loss as a win in the car game. Yeah. But with like, you, you moved out to Vegas, right? Yep. And then you got into sports betting a little bit yep. and you do it right. Like, okay. So one thing that I still, I was actually trying to explain this other night, yeah. the halftime thing. Absolutely. Like, like ha you, you come up with those kind of strategies where yeah. I'm just like, this is a numbers guy. Like I'm a numbers guy, but some of those I'm just kind of like, damn. Yeah. I love you that you brought that? that up. I mean, uh, so not only did I get my degree in law, but we had to take a lot of economics classes and through this came stats. So, uh, you know, you can branch off and take, you know, go to algebra one, two, three, four, or go, you know, take it a little bit further in trigonometry. I took it further in stats and thank God I did because I fell in love with it. And stats comes majorly in handy with sports betting because it is all analytical data. It's not like, oh, I I feel like the Golden State Warriors are going to win today. It's like, no, I have data over the last 10 years that with these parameters showing themselves today, that there is more than a 75% chance that this outcome happens. And uh, yeah, that occurred with the halftime full-time strategy that we like figured out a few months ago. Um, you know, a lot to explain now, but we can go into it if you want. Yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's too much, I can't remember. I know it's like complicated because I can't even remember. Yeah. It, so. I mean, it was, it was through, yeah. uh, it was through football. We determined that football was one of the most efficient markets where the outcome that we have desirable happens the most frequently. And uh, the bet in simple terms was uh, betting on the team that leads at halftime to then lose the full game, which statistically shouldn't happen, but with certain parameters is like a 9x, 10x return most of the time. And we've been killing it. The first week that we attempted this after doing about two weeks of full data analysis over a six season span for the NFL, we made like, in trading terms, we made a plus 40R return. Crazy. And we've been riding that plus 40R return since then, trying new strategies. And that's the coolest part about sports betting is it's very, very similar to trading and you just need an edge and you need it's a little bit more of a numbers game. There's no charts to analyze. Right. It's very, very fun. And there's an edge in everything. And that's one reason we got in sports betting and made Beat the Boogie. Yeah, Beat the Boogie, for those of you who don't know, is a free sports betting uh, community. It's completely free right now. I'll put that in the description yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I, it's something that I enjoy. Um, I used to be a complete DJ on sports betting, like before uh, Playbit even, yeah. before I even was trading. Actually, uh, in 2019, in 2020, um, 2020, I was kind of backing off because I was getting into trading, but I used to be a degenerate, bro. I mean, I had a friend, they, I had these friends that they actually had their own bookie. Like, you know how everybody kind of like oh, does yeah. the, the white label. They were a bunch of frat guys. Uh, shout out Galen, if you're ever watching this. But um, they were a bunch of frat guys that, I don't know how they, essentially they had their own like white labeled fucking bookie. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Now I know how that works, but um, I used to just to bet for fun on there and I never really got it. But then once I started betting a little bit with Beat the Bookie, I mean, you guys were bet on crazy shit. It would be like, we're betting on fucking like French tennis or yep. some random There's an stuff. edge everywhere. Yeah, shout, out, shout out Peaky and shout out Worldwide. Yeah, Peaky. Peaky's yeah. always betting on some wild. He's like, yeah, here's like Turkish soccer or something yeah. crazy. Like, But um, I remember I, I would just put it, like I would I would be up like 50 to 60% of the port. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. And I, I was good at pulling it out. Like, cause I, I came into that with a trading mindset, yeah. like with risk management. Yeah, there are some times I hit some big ones. Like, um, it's it's different than a lot of people that you talk to that are gambling. All of them want to fucking parlay everything. Yeah, parlay, parlay. I mean, I've made oh, some man. like fun lottos and parlays yeah. and fun fights. But um, what would you say is the most? I guess, uh, long-term sufficient plan with sports betting. Cause oh, yeah. you, you have like a bankroll. It's Absolutely. just like trading. Like you have units, it's which the is exact like same R. system, exact right. same system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you're proficient in trading, you can pretty much move your trading system over at least your risk management system with trading over to sports betting. No, no ICT in sports betting. Yeah. No ICT in sports betting. No, <laughs> no smart money concepts. There are, there is uh, you know, there, there are concepts of like smart money is moving because we can see yeah. the handles and the bet percentage. Oh, per really? game. So we can see, you know, how many people is the popular vote for a to one game, but most of the money's being bet on B 
the underdog. And uh, that's where smart money is going because it's the larger sum of money. So this, it, there, it can be an edge with like SMC. No order blocks bank. though. No order blocks yet. I think we're <laughs> going to figure that out very soon now. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, like with parlay, it's like for, number one, if you want to parlay, just round robin. Just round robin the entire card and you'll make more. I guarantee you'll make more instantly. Yeah. Round robin is straight betting like the same bets. Round or? robin is taking, let's say you have a parlay of five teams. Round robin is you break down the five teams that you are going to parlay and you break them into two block orders. Because how many times have you had a parlay where it busted by one leg? Yeah. If all four legs hit and one doesn't on a round robin, you'll still get paid out a good sum of money. Oh, so it's like a parlay, but you still get paid if they it's all It's still a parlay, but odds you're just if, lower odds. Exactly. And I, right. it's like, look. At the end of the day, if you're going for a plus 50 yard trade, I mean, you might be that parlay guy at the end of the yeah, day yeah, trying to hit yeah. a plus, you know, 500 plus 5,000. On a one minute chart. On the one minute chart for sports betting. Exactly. So it's like, you know, if you have toxic traits in trading, they're going to transition over to sports betting. I think if you have toxic traits in trading, you're probably toxic in life. I think so. A hundred percent. Like that's so. trading can teach you so much about your life and who you are as a person because you know, one thing that I learned about myself whenever I was first learning to trade, which was, you know, I think if you ask most people, are you an impulsive person? Most people will say no. Most people, not some people are self-aware, yeah. but like, um, I know I would have said no. And then I, when I first was learning trading, I realized I was like, you're a very impulsive person. You know what I mean? You do a lot, of, you a lot of, yourself. you know, and it, yeah, it teaches you a lot. And that's one of the beautiful things about trading is it will bring the best and the worst out of you. And as long as you're, um, you know, aware enough and kind of mature enough emotionally step back and analyze it it'll make you a better person and kind of like what we were talking about earlier a better entrepreneur absolutely and it's just a, it's it's awesome man just i love that that the kind of the game of it and the the the, the hustle of it is just yeah. awesome man i mean it's one of the one of my favorite markets is a capital-based market where you can scale with more money that you have right because at the end of the day that's exactly what trading is the faster you want to scale can it actually be scaled with more money Right, the more capital you have, you can scale profit faster. And having that opportunity in front of you increases the risk, but your reward goes up exponentially. So just being able to be disciplined and have an edge in that market gives you so many opportunities that no other job is gonna give you in the world. Yeah, man. No, yeah, and trading is undoubtedly the most scalable business on earth. Yeah. It's also one of the most difficult, but once you, you know, have the skill, the capital will come. Like we've seen that and you know, if you can develop a good skill with a small personal account, then you can most likely go and stack prop firm accounts. Yeah. And, you know, we've seen a lot of people, um, you know, even whenever prop firms first started getting popular, well, when I started being aware of prop firms, I had been trading with pretty decent sized capital. It wasn't like I was doing it just to, to get the capital. Yeah. But even if you have the capital and you're very good at trading, prop firms can be nice because you can, you know, you can get a prop firm account, you can be a lot more risky. Absolutely. Than, and that's why a lot of times I, I always tell people, um, Prop firms, you, you're, you have to understand how to game them. And I'm not saying to cheat because there are cheating routes where people, you know, grid trading and Martingale strategies, all this stuff where prop firms will ban you. Yeah. Um, but you have to understand that, like, you're at the casino and there is a way to play. And it's not the same that you trade on a personal account. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not trading personal account or even a live funded account the same way I'm trading a challenge. It's yeah. a huge difference. Um, but yeah, man, like learning about, you know, when I sort of learned trading, I learned so much about myself. Like I would have never thought that I was going to be, you know, the online entrepreneur guy yeah. and all this. Like if you would have told me um, back then that, you know, I wouldn't become a part owner of Playbit, that would have been insane. Like Trust me, absolutely insane. I wouldn't have believed it either. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Like I remember uh, the first time that you had hit me up and you were like, hey, man, thanks for, uh, you know, putting extra value and like you don't have to pay anymore. Yeah. Like I used to be a paying member of this group. Yeah. And then uh, from there, it was like a couple months later, you were like, uh, if you want to, you know, start doing some more streams, like I'll throw you some bread. And um, that was kind of how I got my start with content creating is I was doing the YouTube streams because we had too many people in the Discord. Yep. And it was like Hunter was having to stream my screen or Glacier would yep. have to stream we're my having, screen. having uh, bottleneck issues. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it was like, oh, I'm going to go to YouTube. And then I started getting more viewers on YouTube. And I was like, dang, like this could actually take off. And then that evolved to me kind of blowing up on social media and then becoming an affiliate. Yeah. And then now like we're partners and it's just, it's fucking insane. It's one of my favorite roadmaps that yeah. I'm proud to say that, you know, we're good friends and it's something that I've seen you achieve. I mean, from a uh, member to trusted analyst to being on a salary role, to being a big affiliate, to then having part ownership in my company. And there's no one else that I would want to do it with, but because I've become so ingrained in your journey and so ingrained in the discipline you have as a trader and as an entrepreneur that I trust you significantly. And it's a big role to, you know, give away part ownership of a company, but there's no one else that I trust it with in you. Dude, I, I appreciate it a ton, man. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it because yeah. again if you would have just told me back then what i'd be doing now I, I wouldn't even believe it and it's just in a you know just 
anybody listening is like never, never fucking give up. Never, ever give up. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people in play, but have no idea that this is even happening right now. But when it does, it's going to go absolutely bonkers because it is that like dream journey. It is the journey of being that member and being able to become proficient enough and disciplined in your craft to like get to the next level and have great opportunities placed in front of you. And truly like for anyone listening, like that is what will happen to you is if you do grind and you do enjoy the journey and you show people your value, opportunities will arise. Luck doesn't happen out of thin air. You're creating your luck without even knowing it. Yeah, man. No, 100%. 100%. Like, you know, you put yourself in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Right? Whether you you know you're doing it or not, you you do that. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. And it's also sick just having you on. And I know everybody in Playbit is going to go crazy over this episode because to anybody not that doesn't know, like, you've never doxxed, like, ever in, like, yeah. the three years until yeah, now. Yeah, no, it is an important day for sure yeah. without ever showing my face anywhere or no one knowing my name. But uh, what better time to do it than, like, a massive partnership that we're doing now? Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and I think it's going to be the start of something awesome. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's already been going. Like, we've already been partners. Yeah. But now it's like, you know, we're partner partners. Um, and, and I'm excited for the future, man. But... You know, to somebody who is either new to trading or maybe they've even been trading for a while and they're struggling, what would be your biggest advice to someone in that position? Yeah, uh, number one, um, figure out what type of niche of trading you're gonna be in, whether it's ICT or you're gonna follow more retail concepts or SMC, Wyckoff, Harmonics, whatever it is, please stick with it for a while. That's number one. Stick with a certain strategy for a good period of time before you give up on it after five trades. Number two, after you refine your edge, it's time to get a risk management in order. So get the risk management in order after refining your edge because now you understand the risk reward that you have with the trading strategy that you have. And number three, have fun. It's not too much pressure on the system. You're not going to become a millionaire overnight. Trust the years that come with trading and you'll have fruitful opportunities such as yourself. Yeah, man. I love that. And, and I 100% agree. Well, everybody, thank you for watching another episode of Market Moguls, and I will see you guys in the next one. Also, make sure to uh, follow Ty or Bitcoin Playboy. Sounds even weird me saying that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but make sure to follow him. I'm going to put all his links down in the description. Uh, if you want to you know, learn more about Unbank, we'll have, he's going to be making a bunch of uh, content on how to start your own crypto ATM business because at the end of the day, all of you guys who are traders and whether you're profitable or you're not profitable, once you become profitable, you need to have other places to put your capital. And to expand that and really grow it, um, you're going to need more than just trading. But again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.